so you would you you wouldn't believe that well hello aloha everybody so i actually had to call my friend tanya in germany um and <laughs> she helped me uh, figure out how to go live all right so mm, i hope this is working now hold on i'm gonna check on my other device if i'm looking good all right i hope you all can hear me hi denny's all right let me know if there is any trouble with the audio or video um okay i'm so sorry it's uh starting late today but for next time i know how to do it all right today we're gonna do a prompt from my instagram challenge aloha 23 september and okay let me show you what we'll do we'll do some loose florals these are hawaiian ko'olua ula florals but before we do that we're gonna do some brush control practice with different kinds of brushes so i'm gonna turn the camera around in a minute it's gonna be easier for you to see Okay, yeah, so we'll start with some brush control practices for these flowers and then create this piece with uh, watercolors and colored pencils together. All right, let me turn the camera around. I think I know how to do that. <laughs> All right, here we go. And you can see I set up my iPad as well so I can see your comments. So please feel free to ask questions or just comment anytime all right sorry for the shaky camera i just have to put my phone oops into the phone stand all right okay you guys how's the picture is that all good Okay, let me just explain this little setup. So I have my practice pieces here. This is just thin mixed media paper. So this is not anything fancy. And I have a few more sheets so we can start with our brush control exercises. All right, is the audio quality okay? Everybody can hear me all right? Just let me know, please. And then over here, I have um, a Kadi. Let me just write this down. Handmade paper. This is made from recycled cotton fabric. So it is cotton paper. I really love it because it's so rugged and the texture is really rough. However, I find that the watercolors fade a little bit. So the quality of the colors, the vib vibrancy fades a little bit once the colors are dry. But other than that, I find it really great. So this is where we're gonna do our finished piece. I have my mixed media paper for the exercises that we'll do first and then I have a bunch of different brushes. Now, why would you use, why would you want to use different brushes? Um, so I have my favorite. I really love using these. I mean, we call them mop brushes here, M-O-P. I heard them referred to as, I think, aqua French as well. So basically these are brushes that are bound like this and it gives you a very wide um, how you say that it's like elasticity but also softness the these brushes hold an incredible amount of water so you're able to work really fast with a lot of pigment and water in your brush and these have a very good tip as well. 
So you can do extremely fine lines with these brushes. So these are my personal favorites. And then what I also use a lot are just the regular round brushes. Hold on, let me just put some water on this one so it looks a bit more pretty. <laughs> so this is a really large brush. This is a size 16. But again, you have a really nice tip. So this one is a synthetic brush, which means it's also more elastic. It snaps back way better than, for example, a brush with natural hairs. They, are, they tend to be more soft. And then these funny looking guys I actually brought in here because my other friend, happy lettering Tanya, um, asked if I could maybe talk about these guys here. And these are dagger brushes or, you know, slanted. And again, you can find differences in different brands. So this is the German Kum, which is more elastic, snaps back more easily. This one is a Princeton Neptune that's very soft. So again, it depends on what you want to paint, which brush you will choose. And I usually um, really go back to the same brushes over and over again. Like I don't even use all these ones here. I usually paint everything with just one brush. And oh, hi, Tanya. <laughs> she's, even, she's here, good. Okay, and the last one I want to introduce is a Filbert. It's kind of like a flat brush that was cut in a round shape. And now what this does, you can create, for example, flowers with really rounded leaves very well with this one. And believe it or not, this is also good for really straight lines. All right, so let's start. And don't worry if you don't have all these brushes ready today, I really don't expect you to. If you, for example, only have a round brush, it's totally fine. You can usually paint almost anything with, you know, a round brush, I'd say, at least when it comes to florals. But I think it's fun to try out different brushes and, you know, maybe see if it inspires you to maybe try something new. Okay, I have my Aloha 23 September palette here with six colors that my co-host Rita chose. And I also have a mixing palette today. I find that when you do loose florals, that mixing your colors in a palette first makes things so much easier. You can control the amount of water and you can see exactly what the color looks like. So I recommend that for this exercise today, you'll have a palette ready. And it doesn't matter what material it is, but personally, I find that if you have ceramic, you can really work with this paint well. It doesn't bead, you know, sometimes on plastic or aluminum that happens, that the color doesn't, or the paint doesn't stick to your palette. And that can be a bit frustrating. So with this one, you see it a lot better. Okay, I have my number 16 huge round brush. Please feel free to use another size. You know, you can just go ahead and use a size six or eight. And it always also depends on the kind of paper size you use. If you work really small, then you want to have a teeny tiny brush, right? Okay. Um, oh, sorry, Miriam. I missed your question. Okay. So which brush was it? Maybe I should just quickly go over these one more time. This is a dagger brush. These ones here are called Mop, or I believe Aqua French. This is a Filbert and a round brush. Okay, so if you can, try to hold your pencil more upright when you do these exercises. And if you're, if you're not warmed up at all, you know, you can just honestly start with something like this <laughs> you know shake out your hands and do some exercises like this this helps you can also just take a pencil and do some um you know some figure eights just for warm-up i'm not kidding this really helps OK, 
Okay, so try to hold your brush upright, not like this, not like you'd write something, but almost like in, in calligraphy. And just drag the tip of your brush. Now, if you're um, a left-handed person, it might be easier for you to do this exercise starting on the right, going to the left, okay? So I'm gonna do this for right-handed persons, but just so you know, for this exercise, I want you to try and do what's most comfortable for you. And if you can't do this position, I totally understand. It's really weird in the beginning. So you can, you know, you can do it like this as well. But your line, your line won't be as straight. So try to practice it like this. And then next, you can just do some shapes like this. And for, for the next strokes, try to start with a line like this. And then just press down all the way and then ease up again. And you should see something like this. Okay, let's do this again over here. Very light pressure and then start pressing down full body of the brush and ease up again. And with this method, you can also paint leaves. Light pressure, press down and up again. All right. And then you can add the same technique to the other side and you'll have a leaf shape. This is a very good practice with any kind of round brush. Even if you do lettering or you don't do florals, it really doesn't matter to have this kind of control with your brush. It helps you with painting almost anything. And look what kind of fine lines I can do with a round 16 brush. All right. Let me just quickly write down. So this is, <laughs> this Kadi was actually my sketchbook journal here. So this is a round brush, 16 by the pigeon letters. Okay. And let's look at the, Oh, hold on one more time. Um, one more thing. If you want to paint petals like this one here, start with the tip of the petal and just do, it's a bit similar than the leaf here, just that you try to make more of a round shape. And instead of twisting your hand in weird angles, just turn your paper. This is also true for anything and everything you wanna paint. And see, I'm starting just with the tip of my brush, and then pressing down right away and easing up while turning my paper. The reason the paint looks so weird on this paper is just because this is kind of like a very affordable mixed media paper. So you have no, no good texture or anything to this paper. But honestly, for this exercise, you could even use cheap copy paper. It is only really about practicing the pressure with which you use your brush. Okay, so next we're gonna do the uh, the mop brush. This is a size eight from a German company called Bösner. 
So honestly, I don't really have recommendations for brushes in general because you might like a brush that I can't work with and then also my favorite brushes might not be really something for you. Just try different ones. And again, holding the brush, I tend to hold it like this. And you probably noticed I'm moving my whole arm. So not just, I don't put my wrist down on the paper and do like this. I have it in the air. You can help your arm with your left hand or if you're left-handed with the other hand and kind of guide it. You can even use your whole body. So just really try, hold the brush like this. And if it doesn't work, don't fret. This is totally normal. If you're not used to working like this, it might drive you nuts at first. So if you feel more comfortable, you can maybe put down your elbow on your table and then, you know, slide, slide your elbow across the table like this or part of your arm. If that gives you more stability. And also, you can do the same thing with your mop brush, like I showed you up here. You start very lightly and then add some pressure and ease up again, like this. Light pressure, press down and ease up. The faster you do this, the more pointy the, um, the end part of your stroke will be. So if you go really slow, you're going to probably wobble more and have lines that aren't that straight. And the faster you go, the more, mm, yeah, it sounds weird, doesn't it? But the faster you go in one smooth stroke, the more controlled it will look. And for the leaf, Start with the tip of the brush, then press down all the way. See how the whole body of the brush goes down on the paper and then ease up again and add the other side. All right, and we'll do the flower petals. Again, you start with the tip of your brush and then right away go down with the whole brush body to create a more rounded shape for the petal and then add the other side. Again, turn your paper. Oh, and if you have trouble placing the petals, you can do a pre-sketch with a pencil or colored pencil. But I would just encourage you if, um, if it's just a practice piece of paper to, you know, to just try it out. And if your flower, you know, if you don't make it all the way around, just give, you, give your flower six petals or seven, it doesn't matter. This is really just about practicing using different kinds of brushes. All right, and if this really gives you trouble, you can also um, practice making these kind of strokes with your brush first. So just down and up like this. So you do kind of a half moon shape with, you know, the movement of your hand, like this. And then also the other side. So whatever you paint, try to look at it 
and see what kind of strokes it's made of. And this is true for anything and everything you paint. For, for these flower petals, they're kind of round. So you'll know you have to move your brush in a way that's also more of a rounded shape. For these leaves, they're heart-shaped. So you know, you'll have to kind of just feel your way around how to create this shape. This one is more of a teardrop upside down. So you could even start this leaf here at the bottom. And so step by step, looking at flower pictures, for example, you can just analyze the shape and try to imagine how you would make this shape with your brush. And you'll see if you do this more often, it'll come naturally to you after a while. You'll see a flower and all you see is, oh, Hmm, five petals, five round shapes. Okay, I'll do it like this and this, and you have it all analyzed and you can sit down and paint it. In the beginning, it's tricky because you look at the whole thing, you're probably distracted by the colors and the details. <laughs> but once you break everything down in its single shapes, it's going to be a lot more easy. So this was my Bursna mop. Eight. So if any of you guys know how to <laughs> call this brush other than mop, just let me know in the comments because I always feel like it can't be called mop. It sounds like cleaning the floor, you know, kind of weird. So, all right, next brush. We tried the round one and we tried the mop brush. Okay, we still have the filbert and the dagger. So let's do the filbert first. As I said, this is almost like a flat brush with a rounded edge. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Okay, Sylvie says she also knows it as mop brush in English, right? How do you say it in German? I think I asked you guys that before. I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> okay, I'm going to grab some more paint from my palette. Quill brush. Oh, thanks. Yeah, thanks, Art Moments. Quill brush actually sounds a lot more elegant, doesn't it? For wash pencil. Ah, that makes sense too. Although, yeah, calling it a wash, you know, a wash brush is kind of confusing because like a large flat brush is also a wash brush. So I like quill. Okay, so mop brush or quill brush. Now we know. Okay, but this is a filbert, three-quarter inch. And if you hold it this way, oops. you'd be surprised what nice lines this brush can create. So if you've ever seen muralists paint a mural, they often use these brushes for the line work because you have so much control and the lines get really steady and really clear. Hi there. Bye. Have fun at the farm. <laughs> cheers, right. everyone. Yeah, cheers. And beer. Cheers and beer. <laughs> oh my God, pretzel. Oh, pretzel. Oh, I want a pretzel. <laughs> Yeah, so Brezen has show us finds. Okay, that was my husband, Mr. Bean. He's going to the coffee farm, picking coffee. All right. Everybody says hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, Mom. Oh, yeah, Mom's watching too. <laughs> oh. All right, I'll just have a sip of tea. Man, guys, I miss pretzels. You know, not the, not these these hard little 
tiny dry ones, but the oh, the ones from Bavaria, the large, large soft pretzels. You know, guys, like in, in Germany, in the South, we have pretzels that are this size. I'm not kidding, like this. Ah, okay, sorry, I'm getting distracted. This is what pretzels do to me. Okay, we did the lines. Again, moving the whole arm. And then just, you know, put down your filbert brush and try what it can do and see how beautiful. It's like the perfect half circle shape here just by putting the brush down like this. So you can imagine this works actually pretty well for petals. You can just do two strokes like that. And you have, you can know, if you have uh, a flower with really round petals, this would be perfect. Or, you know, these eucalyptus um, branches, the eucalyptus that has these really round leaves, that would be perfect too. Ja, genau, so Wiesenbritzen. Oh, yum, yum, yum. You have good soft pretzels in Saarland also? Oh, really? Oh, gotta come visit. Liebe Grüße zurück! Juhu! Okay. All right, back to the practice. Okay, so if you want to paint a flower with really round shapes, so just super easy just put the brush down and again if you don't know where to place the petals you can start with a sketch but for this exercise i would just recommend to you know just do it don't overthink it just see what your brush can do now what i personally find is i find it a bit tricky to do leaves with this brush so this is not my preferred method to do leaves because it's not I mean you can you can create these strokes here but I always feel it it's a bit I don't really have a good control over my filbert brush for the leaves so if I did my petals with a filbert brush I would switch to another brush to do the leaves but see, again, this is a personal preference. You might just fall in love with this brush, especially if you paint other media like acrylics or you paint murals, for example. You might just find that this is the perfect brush for you. So for me personally, I love this brush when I want more bold strokes. And I want them to be very even or if I paint something that's really round or if I'm working with something else than watercolor so um, acrylic pieces or wall paintings would be great with this brush um, yeah Sylvie this is really a nice brush to have and you can of course start with a smaller one right because this is again a huge brush I love painting with huge brushes but if you want to start you can just get something like this um, which this is a size 8 so the sizes are not always consistent you can see here this is 3 quarter inch and this is a size 8 So if you want to do smaller florals, for example, you could just start with a smaller filbert brush. All right. Have any of you guys um, experience with a filbert brush? Do you like it? What do you use it for? So if you want to share in the comments, that would be great. Okay, last brush is the one that Happy lettering Tanya asked about. That's the dagger brush. Okay, I actually wanted to only introduce one, but let's do both. Why not? So this one here, Kum, the, um, the German brand, 
has synthetic um, bristles and is really very elastic and snaps back easily. Whereas the other one I'll show you later is very soft. So that gives me a lot of trouble. I like them when they're a bit more sturdy. Okay, I'm holding my brush almost upright. And look at this hairline. You would not think, right? Like just looking at this kind of brush with this angled edge that you could make a line like this. So once you get used to this brush, this might actually turn into your favorite loose floral painting brush because you can do seriously almost anything with this brush and you can use it from both sides. So you can put it down with the long edge first or with the short edge and you can create so many different strokes with this brush. And it's also really great for dots. Okay, Eike wants to know if the filbert is a Katzenzungen pinsel. Yes, I think that's the same. And Katzenzungen pinsel in English would be the cat tongue brush. Isn't that cute? The cat tongue brush. Who comes up with the name Filbert? I mean, come on, cat tongue? That's so cute. Let's call it cat tongue. It's gonna be our little insider, you guys. Okay, for the leaf, start with the long side first. And then when you move your brush to the side, you also kind of turn it a little bit, okay? So you start straight, and then once you put the whole belly of the brush down, you kind of turn it to the side, and then straighten it again for the line. So it's kind of like you're driving your car and you're going into the, or your bicycle your bicycle and you're going to the curve, you lean over a little bit and then you straighten again when you come to the straight part of the road. Okay, so painting is like driving, uh, riding your bike. To the side and then back up and straighten. And just like riding your bike, once you know how, you also know how to use this brush. Then you can do the same on the other side. You just lean over to the other side and then back. And you will find one side is way easier for you. So if you have trouble doing the same thing on the other side, again, just turn your paper. Okay, Market wants to know all right, hold on. So this one here, this was made by the German brand Kum. It's um, their website is kum.net. And the other one I'll show you in a minute is by Princeton. It's a Princeton Neptune. Okay, so back to our leaves. So if it's easier for you, just do the same thing on the other side by turning your paper. This method works best um, on watercolor paper when the paint stays wet a little longer because now you can see of course I have two tones right um, if this is the look you wanted to go for perfect but if you want your leaves to look cohesive you gotta work kind of fast and use some really good paper and 
enough water so everything stays nice and wet when you add the other sh um, side of your leaf. Oh, PTL. Okay, sorry. This is another question about which brush the filbert was. So this is the Pigeon Letters, which is the brand name of Peggy Dean. She's an artist based here in the Pacific Northwest in America. She has her own brush line, synthetic fibers, um, no animal testing or animal cruelty. So yeah, she's very uh, interested in, in that aspect of creating brushes. So the pigeon letters, and I'll write it down for you. Oops. Yeah, the pigeon letters, Peggy Dean. I think she ships internationally. And I have to say, guys, her brushes are very similar to the comb brushes. The, the way, you know, the elasticity, how they snap back. Yeah, I have to say they're very similar and it's probably why these two are my favorite brushes of all the brushes I've ever tried. Okay, so. Let's do some petals with our filbert. One side. I mean, you see, you almost have the shape here already. So if you make a certain kind of flower, you could do the shepel, um, the shape of the petal with just one stroke like this, right? So down and to the side. If you want your leaves to be a bit more rounded, you can do both sides. this. You can even add a third stroke. You know, these loose florals, I mean, I know it looks fantastic when people just do it dun, 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 and then they're done. Every, every stroke is one petal and one leaf and it's like magic. But don't shy away to just, you know, Use three strokes for one petal. And even here, even here you could turn your paper like this and make the other side of your petal. just like I showed you with the leaves. Because I really find that um, with the filbert brush, one side works better. And usually if you're right-handed, the left side of the leaf will work better than the other side. Okay, I'm rinsing my brush and I'll just quickly write down what brush I used. So this was the Filbert comb size eight and oh, sorry. This is the dagger. And this is the Filbert by the pigeon letters. And that was a three quarter inch. And the last one is our Princeton Neptune. And that's a quarter inch and it is super soft. So not my favorite, but it might be just the right brush for you. I know from a lot of my Instagram friends that they love Princeton Neptune. 
So the only other Princeton Neptune I have is a large round brush, like a size, yeah, 16 probably. And I love that one too. So what I find my problem is, is that the control of the line for me personally is so much more difficult because the bristles are so soft. I mean, not it, it's not looking bad or anything, but getting a straight line with this, I find that so much more tricky. But curving your leaves or your petals with this kind of brush is probably easier because you can just, when you set it down, when you push down on the brush, look how easy it is to create the big belly of your leaf. So when you compare it to the other one here that I previously did with this brush, you can see the angle wasn't as steep, whereas with the Princeton Neptune, I could just go down super easily. It's almost as if I don't have to add the other side of the leaf anymore. I mean, I could just make the whole leaf with just one stroke. So let's say you do your line here, you could just really add the whole leaf. Like that, the whole branch, just pretty much one stroke. However, I'd say this is not the best brush to get if you're just starting out trying new brushes. I'd say get this one when you have a bit more experience with other more, um, you know, um, less soft brushes. But you know, maybe I shouldn't say that. I mean, maybe you really take to these soft brushes from the start. So if you can, try different brushes. And I think usually the round brushes are the, the least expensive ones. So if you're just trying out, you might wanna start trying different round brushes, maybe a size six. And you can get one that is very elastic and snaps back and then you can try one that's super soft and just see what you like better. And I'd say if you try a round brush and you find that you like the softer version better, then it's very likely that it's gonna be the same for all of your brushes. You know what I mean? I mean, I started painting everything with a very elastic round brush that snaps back easily. And that's just my favorite go-to brush for any type of brush. So no matter if it's a flat or quill or dagger, I just prefer the ones that aren't that soft. All right, so this was the Princeton Neptune uh, quarter inch. So let's see if I can line them all up here. Um, I think this is out of frame. This one and the large round brush with, was this one here. All right. <laughs> so did you guys practice alongside with me? 
did I make you cur curious about maybe trying a new brush? <laughs> All right, so now that we're warmed up, let's tackle the painting. Okay, so if your sketchbook has a different shape or size, don't worry, you can just you know, if you just use a rectangle piece of paper, you can just maybe paint this part of the painting. It doesn't really matter. Or, you know, you could also just try an arrangement of some of these flowers and leaves without really um, worrying about getting the layout perfect today. Because especially if you're trying a new brush today, You know, you might want to focus on painting the leaves and the flowers and not so much on the arrangement and everything. So you can see here that I not only used watercolors for this piece, but I also used colored pencils. And the ones that I use are water soluble. So you have colored pencils that can't be reactivated with water. You know, they're almost like miniature wax crayons. And then you have these kind here, which you can activate with water. And I find that with loose florals, to give them a little more line work, the water soluble colored pencils work best um, because you don't have to worry about ev drying everything before you apply the colored pencil. So with a regular colored pencil, if you go into your painting while the paint is still wet, you might start ripping the paper because the lead is usually more hard. With these colored pencils, they're super soft. Really, they're almost like crayons. When, when it comes to the softness, I mean. <laughs> Sylvie's going to get a big filbert soon. Yeah, yeah, I hope you'll love it. I mean, I just... I find it such, such a great brush, just, you know, to try something new. Okay. Hey, Mom. Oh, thanks. Oh, I'm happy you find this interesting. Well, my mom is a um, calligrapher. She does Japanese calligraphy. So when she does that, I'm just like totally in awe. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, that's like the very next level on top of the next level. I'm like, oh my gosh. So she knows all about brushes and calligraphy brushes and quill brushes and soft brushes and all the brushes. Okay, you guys. So colored pencils. These ones here are from Durant. That's a British company. And these are called Ink Tents. And these are my favorite. So when you apply them, they look like colored pencil, but then when you add water, they behave like watercolors. If you don't add a lot of water, the cool thing is that they actually retain the look of colored pencils a little bit. So you can still see the pigments of your colored pencils shining through. If you add a lot of water, you'll just get a watercolor wash. So you wouldn't be able to distinguish between regular watercolors and colored pencils anymore. But you can really vary the amount of water you apply and have different outcomes. And the cool thing is you can go into your water spots. Look, how cool. And just add colored pencil look. And it's going to wash out a little bit. So these are super versatile. There are other companies that create water-soluble colored pencils. So this one is a German company, Faber-Castell. Um, this is the Albrecht Dürer. But honestly, I think they also make uh, Aqua Faber, I think. Those are also good. These are more creamy, so I personally like these better just because of the creaminess. Um, 
So that's the Albrecht Dürer. And then same here, you apply them, they look like colored pencils, and you go in with water. Oh yes, yeah, Sylvie just mentioned it, so the Aqua Faber is the cheaper one. I'll just write it down here, okay? Aqua Faber. So more expensive, Dura, cheaper. Aquafaba. They both do the same thing. You can apply water and they behave more like watercolors. And you can go back in while the paint is still wet and add some nice texture and line work. Ah, oh, gorgeous. I just love these water soluble colored pencils. And um, yeah, if you have your favorite company that makes water soluble colored pencils, you can write this down in the comments for the others to see. But yeah, these are the two companies that I mostly use. I actually had a problem with my Aqua Fabas. They, the lead just breaks. I mean, seriously, it was, I had a, a big colored pencil and it, now it's like this because it just keeps breaking. Every time I used um, a sharpener, it, it would just break again, so. It was probably my fault for my item, you know, letting it drop or something. Um, but I've never had this problems with these guys here. So even after dropping them, they, they still work. And I think it's because the lead is so creamy and not brittle at all. Okay, so let's put these to the side. And, okay, let's start. Oh, so, um, just one more thing. The reason why I'm using colored pencils today is water-soluble colored pencils is because even though I love this technique here, using a dip pen and ink, if your watercolor isn't dry, you get this. So see how everything just feathered out here. Even though I personally don't mind this look, you know, <laughs> you know, guys, guys, how messy I love it. I mean, I just, I, I personally really love this look. Um, but just make sure you have to let the paint dry completely before you add any kind of ink. And it doesn't matter if you use a fine liner or pen ink. Um, make sure that not only the paint is dry but also the paper is dry so that was my mistake the paint was dry but the paper because this is cotton paper was still wet in the core and i had all these all my ink feather out all across like this so for that reason because i can't dry this within the time limit of the live, live stream. This is why I'm using the colored pencils because you can do gorgeous line work with these and you don't have to worry about drying the paper first. You can go in while the paper is still wet. Okay, let me get my palette ready. So I would usually not even do a sketch However, let me give you a few tips for setting up a layout. I'd say if you have a double spread like this, or even if you have a rectangle sheet of paper, don't put your flower in the middle. Go with an uneven number and place, place a hero flower on the side of your paper and then move the focus a little bit and maybe do some kind of a closed flower like this here. For balancing things out, you can do another hero flower over here, but maybe cut it off at the bottom. So you can already see you have a diagonal here, which I think is more interesting than just putting two in the center of each page. 
So you have your little diagonal here and then you want to get the viewer's eye up again and around. So you want to put another big thing here. So this could be another half flower up here and maybe another blossom on this side. So we have one, two, three, and then two blossoms. And as a filler, you can maybe do another little blossom here. Um, it's not a blossom. I'm, I'm trying to find the word. So when the flower hasn't bloomed yet, but it's still like this. Oh, is that a bud? Okay, sorry. So forget that I said blossoms. I mean buds. Like this is open flower. And this is a closed, still closed bud. Yes, thanks, Sylvie. <laughs> All right. And then in between, you can add the leaves. So look at your... Look at the placement here and see where you still have some space. You can just intersperse your leaves here to fill some space. But honestly, don't feel obliged to fill all the spaces. Leave some white space. I think it makes the whole arrangement more interesting if you have at least some kind of white space. And then you can fill the, you know, you can fill some of the spaces with some little branches too. And again, I would always try and create some kind of line that gets your viewer's eye to go around your painting in some way. So see, we have a diagonal here, but then we also have this elliptic shape formed by the branches here. In this example, it's more, I don't know, I'd say like an up and down zigzag, maybe. And in here, in this one, I can see kind of like a circle shape here. And you see, I left white space quite a bit. And I think it balances things out a bit more. Yeah, so Sylvie says placement is difficult, I agree. And with bouquets, yeah, but you can apply really the same the same ideas to a bouquet. If you do a bouquet, you can do an uneven amount of hero flowers, you know, like one, two, three, and then balance them out with some smaller flowers and then just have some leaves crazily sticking out to some sides. So even within a bouquet that is like this, like a Blumenstrauss, right? You can try and create a circle shape, an elliptic shape, maybe even a diamond shape in the pattern you create within that bouquet. Okay, so now we have the placements of our flowers. I'm gonna use my quill brush. I'm loving the new word. I'm loving quill brush. So thanks to Denise, I now know a much better word for my mop brush. Okay, so I grabbed some of my dark red here. Oh, sorry. And if you wanna start with just a little sketch where the petals go, you can just draw the center line one, two, three, four, five. And then you know exactly where to place the tip of your brush. And then go left and right for every petal. And move your sketchbook so it's easier for you To apply the brush strokes. Okay, I used a lot of paint and not enough water, I think, so I want to just use more water so I have some more interesting blends going on. So you see I didn't pick up any more paint, I just pick up picked up some more water. 
and I just rinsed my brush I picked up more water and I'm just gonna go over these areas here and I'm rinsing my brush again so it's really clean and I just pick up some of my pigment here so I'm lifting this is called lifting lifting some of my paint all right oh, my mom li likes my um nail polish today thanks mom <laughs> Yeah, so Sylvie has the same Cadi sketchbook and you know, it's like, <clears throat> excuse me, it's like a sponge. This paper is crazy. I mean, the amount of water it takes, but I love that, you know, it's just, mm. the only drawback really is that the colors are not very vibrant once they're dry. That's the only thing. It's a bit, yeah, that's a bit sad. Okay, I just um, drew in the center lines of my petals. And now I have more water and less pigment. So it's more of a nice wash effect. If you don't wanna go to the edge of your paper you can mask it down with some washi tape first okay but i don't mind i'll just go over the edge here for this piece and then the last one here i cut this off a little bit so here's the center and again um and for more variety try to make the petals point in a different direction for this one so don't do it the same way as this one okay so we'll do one and two and three and four and five okay i'm starting here and then pressing my brush down all the way and going right back to the center down and around and up, down and around and up. For all of you who do lettering, it's kind of like doing downstrokes and upstrokes, okay? So you're doing a downstroke and back up. <laughs> downstroke and back up. So while my paint is still wet, I can ping, pick up some more pigment and just drop it here at the edges, at the tips of my, te of my petals. If you've seen the reference photos of the Ko'oloa Ula flower that I posted on Instagram in my stories today, you can see that the tips of these flowers are actually darker than the inside. So with this kind of technique, you can also paint different flowers that mm, maybe have a gradient going on. So for example, you know, if you have flowers that are more light colored in the center and then they get darker or a different color, you can drop in some more paint while your paper is still wet. So I could have even dropped in a different color, let's say a, a bright pink or so, and then I'd have a beautiful ombre effect or gradient okay um, don't mix the paint too much watercolor is really at the greatest I think if you just let it do its thing and let it mix on its own so try to not mess with the um, you know with your pigments too much okay so let's pick our moss green next. So for the leaves, because these leaves are kind of heart shaped, 
so you won't be able to do them in just one stroke and that's totally fine so I'm starting with the leaves that don't touch any flowers first and I'm doing really the same thing as I did with the petals I start with the tip of my brush and then immediately press down to create my leaf shape and then just paint in the rest of your leaf. Now, if you have a leaf that touches your flower, you have to make a decision. If you don't want the colors to bleed into each other, you have to wait till the flower is dry. If you don't mind, like me, I don't mind, you can paint your leaf and just let the red and the green mix. It's just gonna be a brown anyway, so I think it actually goes really well with this kind of painting, with this floral painting. But see how it starts to bleed here. And you know, the pigment is feathering into, the red pigment is feathering into the green one. I personally love it, but as I said, if you don't like that, just wait till everything is dry or you can just paint everything else that's not attached to the flower first including all the buds and all everything else and then paint the leaves that are adjacent to the flowers All right, I'm picking up some more of my moss green. And I'm also grabbing some of my yellow ochre, which is almost empty. This one here, this is Aloha Watercolors. So this is my own handmade brand of watercolors. And this paint, oh man, this is a staple in everybody's palette. And this particular pigment is not manufactured anymore. So I had to come up with a substitute pigment and now my new color is called Beach 2, which is probably the, <laughs> the most uninspired name for a paint I've ever created. <laughs> but I kind of want to, you know, signal to people it's, the, it's almost the same one as Beach. Just a slightly different pigment. Uh, okay, so as you can see, I dropped in some of my yellow ochre into my green leaves while they were still wet. Now, if you're working with a non-cotton paper, if you just have some wood pulp paper or even just some mixed media or journal paper, um, you might not be able to do it like this because the colors won't blend that well. Uh, and you have to do everything right away. So it's because the, the paint will dry so quickly on just regular paper. So if you have more regular paper, try to do all the steps in, in one go while the paint is still wet. Okay, and then for, um, for those little buds here, have kind of a top part that's almost like an upside down umbrella and the same one here I'm sorry if this is going a bit fast so I started by just drawing a line and then adding my upside down umbrella shape here and you can see I'm kind of doing random strokes for this one. So, you know, we're doing this, this kind of, this part here now. So start with a line and then just add your upside down umbrella. And then while the paint is still wet, you want to add in some green pigment. And again, don't mess with it too much. Really just let it do its thing. Okay. 
<laughs> so my mom, Takako, had a question when it comes to the paper being thirsty. <laughs> yeah, that's cute. So mom, when the paper is thirsty, it's really like human people are thirsty and want to drink. So it just means that the paper can soak up a lot of water. You put water down and it's like... Das Papier saugt viel Wasser. Papier ist durstig. Das heißt, das Papier ist sehr aufnahmefähig für Wasser. Wie ein Schwamm. Okay. So. Um, and then, back to our painting. Well, now we have kind of like the same decision we have to make. When we added the leaves to our floral shapes here, do you want the bleed or do you not want it? Do you want to um, have the colors mix or not? So again, if you don't want your colors to mix, wait till this is dry or continue with other parts of the painting while this is drying. If you don't mind the colors mixing, you can just continue with your petals here. And of course, you know, another option would be to just leave a space. See how I did that here? I left a white space in between the green part and the red part. And so they never touched and they, they never bled into each other. So in order to make these half open blossoms, you can start with your brush at the top and then just kind of swing it around and just really lift it up quick. And then you will get this um, kind of fast moving stroke. So you can really just kind of whip the brush like that, like whip. And then you can also see when you use this method, your the tip of your petal might not go into one point, but it'll look more um, wild <laughs> like this. So this is really a matter of taste. If you don't like this look, if you rather have your points being pointy and just one point, then just go slow and then slowly lift up your brush and you'll have a more defined tip. But I like it messy, as you know, so I'm just going to do, 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 do like this. So if you're not sure about this part, always, always feel free to just take a practice piece of paper and, you know, just practice. Practice this kind of stroke until you feel, and then you know while you're still in your practice paper you just switch your hand over to the real paper and then you know you can fool your brain oh I'm still practicing and BAM it's gonna look great <laughs> oh mom you're so cute Okay. Oh, by the way, even though her name says Takako, um, she goes by Taki. It's kind of like a nickname for her because, um, yeah, we found that outside of Japan, a lot of people um, can't really remember her name that well. So Taki. Taki is a lot easier to remember. So you guys can call my mom Taki. Okay, well, I think this is already looking pretty good. I'm liking the layout. I think we missed something over here. So let's put... Um, mm, <laughs> yeah. Let's just put another half open flower here that just kind of comes in cheeky from the side like this. Okay, so, okay, you guys, what do you think? Do I need some more leaves over here? Yeah, I think so, hmm? This one is kind of 
floating around in space all by itself. It's very sad. I think it needs a leafy companion. All right, so. Hmm, let's put the leaf here. Wow, this is a really weird looking leaf, but that's fine. It's just gonna hardly be noticeable once I'm done with the whole thing. I think the why I don't like it is because the angle is kind of strange, I think. Yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna maybe add uh, another one that comes out here. Okay, I'm not sure if that made it better, but yeah, it was worth a try. If you're not sure about layouts like this, you can totally feel free to just sketch out the whole thing first. Or if you don't want to sketch on the paper, you can sketch out on a different piece of paper and then just take this as a template and then paint. So don't feel pressured to just go in and do everything like perfectly without any kind of sketching. You know, whatever floats your boat, seriously, guys, whatever makes you happy, whatever makes you the most comfortable, relaxed for your painting session, do it. I don't care what it is and how you do it. It really is all about being relaxed and um, letting, you know, your mind go. Take a deep breath. <laughs> And really just enjoy the process. If you have to prepare more to enjoy the process, then by all means, make the preparations the main part of your exercise. So you can just sit down and just paint and have fun with the final painting. Okay, so what's missing now are the little branches. And let's look at our painting. So we have, yeah, as I said in the beginning, we have a diagonal here, point to point, large flower. But we also have kind of like this shape going on here, don't we? Flower, 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 like this. So it would be actually nice to maybe set a counterpoint and do another circle down here. And we could define this by adding some branches that go in this kind of flow down here. Okay, we can do one and then maybe it branches into here and disappears over here. So the reason I'm showing you guys this process today and I'm not just repainting my previous design was really because I wanted to explain a little bit how I came come up with my layouts for double spreads like this. And again, if you can't do it right away, don't despair. This is also a matter of practice. And um, I don't know if you know that, but I was a professional photographer for almost 13 years. So I did Oh, uh, mostly wedding photography, but also landscape and pretty much everything for magazines. So for me, um, this kind of layout is probably more easy because I'm so used to framing a picture in the way that it's cohesive and balanced and everything. So again, if you if you struggle with this kind of layout and placement, um, just practice that for a while and you can even do little thumbnails. You don't always have to start with the real size sketch. Just take a piece of paper and make little preview thumbnails. You know, they can just be stamp sized and, and try out different placements of your florals or whatever you're painting. And then just listen to your guts. I mean, you can try and analyze everything but usually we have a good eye. We know what's pleasant and aesthetic. So look at the little thumbnails, look at your little preview sketches 
and just choose the one that you like best. You might even have to step away for a moment because we all, you know, we all know when you paint for too long, everything looks the same. Everything is kind of like floating around in your brain and making a little, um, bit of a, a chaos there. So just step away for a minute, come back, look at it again, and then just, you know, just make a decision. All right. And I'm picking up a tiny little bit of my really bright orange and mixing it with the green to mute it a little bit. And then I'm just gonna drop this in in my little tiny branch here along the way. And for this, I'm using just the tip of my brush. Okay, so, hmm. Yeah, I actually think this looks pretty good. So for some details, I'm going to switch over to my colored pencils now. And again, I'm using water-soluble colored pencils which allow me to go into my painting without ripping the paper. So again, if you're using regular colored pencils, you have to wait till everything's dry because otherwise you're just gonna tear the paper. Oh, sorry, one more thing I forgot is the, the yellow center parts here. The yellow centers of my flowers. So I'm picking up some yellow ochre straight from the pan and then just holding my brush upright, just doing dot, dot, dot in the center. And if you do this when the flower is still wet, you're going to get some gorgeous mixes between the yellow and the red. But I totally forgot. So my flower centers are a bit more pronounced. Um, but yeah, if you, so like in this case here, I didn't wait at all. And the yellow is almost gone. It just bled into the red. And then in this part, the paint was already dry. So it depends a little bit on the kind of look you want to achieve. The more pronounced you want the yellow dots to be, the longer you have to wait till everything is dry. If you don't wait, you'll just have um, a big lake of messy colors. Okay, and now we're ready for the colored pencils. So if you have brand new colored pencils, you might want to test them out first before you put them on paper, just to see what the color will be like. And they usually also look a lot different without water. So what I find with the water soluble colored pencils is that as soon as you add water, they are more bright in color so especially the reds and purples they kind of tend to look almost dark brown or even black when used without water um by the way if you like the look of just loose florals you can leave it like this too or you can um you can go in with a really tiny round brush and add your line work with watercolors as well you know there's no need um, or no obligation for you to use uh, colored pencils just because i'm doing that make sure you turn your paper in a way so that you don't drag your hand through parts of your painting that might still be wet and just be conscious just be aware of the the spots where your paint is still dry so you can avoid putting your hand in there okay and then for this one i'm just going to add some lines and it i really want to emphasize that 
this is really very much a matter of taste. So you might not like this kind of look because it does look a little bit like this is my sketch and I wasn't able to to paint my painting properly following my sketch. So if you like, you can also just stay within your painted areas and not go over them at all. But for me, I actually also like to just add some additional leaves just with those fine lines on my colored pencil. You can also add a little bit of shading and a bit of texture to your watercolors, especially if you have handmade or rough or cold pressed watercolor paper. Adding colored pencil will bring out the texture of the paper even more. Um, you don't have to add colored pencil to all of your shapes. You know, you can just leave one as is. So just watercolor. Um, try to do the same with the colored pencils as you did with the, with the brush. So use different kinds of pressures. Even with a colored pencil, you might not be used to using the colored pencil like that. You might be used to just pressing down hard to make one smooth line. But it's the same with colored pencils. You can use different kind of pressures. You can even use the side of the pencil, just the tip. And, you know, press down hard or very light. And this way you get very different varieties of lines. And I also usually find that when I start a line and then just whip my colored pencil like that, the end is, a mu um, is much thinner than the beginning. So you can work with that as well. You know, just do very quick, fast strokes. And then do slower strokes, more deliberate to have a more cohesive, uh, not cohesive, uh, more straight or balanced line, I want to say. So these flowers, the Ko'oola Ula flower, is a flower that you can only find in Hawaii. And unfortunately, it's on the very endangered flowers list, so it's, it's almost impossible to see this flower anymore. I have personally not even seen it yet, only on photographs, but I just find it so beautiful. And to my knowledge, it's not really an autumn flower. Um, I basically was just looking for a flower which matches this month's color palette. This is how I came up with this one because it has kind of an autumn feel, I'd say, because of the way it's colored. This nice dark, rich, you know, dark red. And kind of like a hibiscus, even though this is not a hibiscus, this is actually part of the uh, mal malve family, M-A-L-V-A-E, malve, yeah. When the flowers are half closed, sometimes you can see parts of the flower sticking out and then it kind of, you know, makes it look a bit like a hibiscus. So the steamen of the, the flowers can be visible like this. Oh, thanks mom. Okay, so just adding some more lines with my colored pencil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let's add some like 
leaves from the side over here. And maybe one comes in on this side. And as you can see, I'm not even using water with my color pencils. I'm really using them as, as color pencils in this case. But if you end up not, you know, maybe not liking one of the lines that you did, you could go back in with some water and blend out that line from your watercolor pencil. You know, that's the other advantage you have when you can reactivate your, your color pencil lines. You can just pretty much work more freely because you know you can you know you can fix it if you don't get the line right straight away you can just blend it in with the rest of your painting just switching between colors to make it a bit more interesting here and i'm adding some dark brown to my branch I kind of want to add another branch here, maybe just for this part, like this, yeah. So I could do this with watercolors, of course, but now that I'm working with my colored pencil, I'm just going to go in add some water. But see how interesting. So over here, I used the colored pencil and added water. And this is regular watercolor. And I feel as if this is more bright. Like the color is more bright than regular watercolor. So maybe this is because it's a colored pencil and, you know, the, um, the way they make it, the ingredients they use to make these colored pencils are a bit different than what I use in my watercolors. I wish I knew how to make colored pencils. Ooh, I would love to be able to make those. But I would also probably go insane trying to manufacture these here at home by myself. So it's probably good that I don't know how to make them. <laughs> yeah, I already tried to make crayons, you know, wax crayons and pastels and that, and that already almost drove me nuts. So I think for now, I'm just gonna stick to my watercolors. <laughs> That's it. Okay, this is looking pretty good. I think this would also be a beautiful pattern on some kind of fabric maybe or tea towel or something. So how are you? Paintings going on for those of you who paint along. Are you happy with your outcome? I hope you're enjoying the session. And if you painted along with me, you know, you can um, post your painting on Instagram. My Instagram, I have two. One is the Aloha Studios. The other one is Aloha Watercolors. So feel free to tag me there so I can see what you created. Because here on YouTube, I kind of have no way of seeing your creations. Unless, of course, you have your own YouTube channel. Then I might be able to see it. But I can see mostly it's best to just tag me on Instagram and I'll see it. Okay, so where is... I usually have this cool date stamp. Um, let me see if I can find that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There it is. Okay, so... It's the September 15, 
and need a stamp pad. to look for a nice color to go with my painting so let's see if that works let's do a little pre-stamp oh that looks actually really good i didn't really expect it to show up that well on this kind of paper okay yeah that's pretty good Debbie? Oh, I'm glad you had fun painting along. And yes, I hope you'll do it again and try again. I mean, seriously, guys, for this kind of technique, the often, the more often you do it, the more natural these kind of movements will become. And I honestly believe that this kind of loose painting technique is one of the best when you want to relax painting. In the beginning, it might be really frustrating and actually take more out of you than painting something else. But I really believe that with a lot of practice, you come to this point where this is the most relaxing painting exercise you can think of. Because in the end, all you'll have to do is have a few paints ready, a piece of paper, and you can just do, you can just do strokes like that. And you know, you don't even have to paint a specific flower or plant. You can just do random leaf shapes. It's just, I just find it one of the most calming exercises in, in painting. All right, you guys, thank you so much, especially <laughs> for your patience in the beginning where I couldn't, uh, I didn't know how to join my own live stream. Of course, uh, you know, that, that happens to me. <laughs> <laughs> but for next week I'll do another next uh, I'll do another stream next week here on YouTube and then I will know how to do it so we can start on time. Okay, so I think next week's theme is a is a wreath, right? I can't even remember, but it's something with fall florals. So um I'll think about something and if you subscribe to my newsletter I'll send you a reminder and the link to the video in time so you can put it down in your agenda and for next week I think I'm also gonna do a um a template for you so you can maybe practice drawing at first or you know have your paper and the template ready to go you can find my newsletter when you hop over to um, my website, doesn't matter which one, either thealohastudios.com or alohawatercolors.com. You can scroll down and you'll find a link to the newsletter. All right. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the session. Please share what you painted with me over on Instagram. You can tag me at Aloha Watercolors and the Aloha Studios. All right. I wish you all a wonderful weekend and see you next time. Aloha.